These are 10 tips to save time with Outlook rules to help you organize and prioritize your inbox. So with that being said, let's nerd out. Number one is to move emails that you are CC'd or BCC'd on to a separate folder for review. So to add a rule, we will go up to rules and then manage rules. And then here we will go add new rule and give it a name, which we will call this one CC BCC. And I would recommend keeping the name of your rules shortened. And we'll dive into that a little bit later in the video. So under the condition, we are going to go when I am not on the to line, meaning that you are either on the CC or the BCC line. And the action is going to be move this to a folder. And at the bottom here, you can create a new folder. And if you already have a folder, then you might see it in this little quick preview here, or you can go to move to a different folder to pull up your full list of folders. I already have a folder here called CC and BCC. So we will go and select that. And then at the bottom, we have run rule now. So if we leave this ticked, then that is going to run the rule on all of the emails that are in your inbox currently, plus future emails. Whereas if you leave this unticked, then it will only run the rule on new emails coming into your inbox. So I wanna run this now because I've already got that email from Mike in there and I wanna show you what this looks like. So if we go and save and then just click out of here, we will see that that email has been removed from my inbox and if we go to the CC and BCC folder, then we are going to see that email moved there. So this is a great way to remove clutter from your inbox and to focus on other more important emails. And if you are like me, then you might need to be reminded to check this folder, you know, maybe once a day or a couple of times a day. So you could just create an event in your Outlook calendar or even a task in Planner or To Do to remind yourself and just make sure that you make it recurring so that it happens at those required intervals. Number two is how we can pin important emails to the top of our inbox. And this can be emails from important people, or it can even be emails containing keywords. And at Amy's Animal Shop, we are planning for the Q4 project. And I want to ensure that these emails are pinned to the top of my inbox so that I can prioritize them. Once again, we will go up to manage rules and then add new rule. This one, I will just call pin. And the condition is going to be when the subject or body includes, and then here we will add our keywords, which will be Q4 project. Down below under add an action, we are going to go pin to top. Once again, I'm going to run this rule now and we will go ahead and save. So now when we go back into this inbox, we can see that that has now been moved to the top and we'll see that there's that little pin button that is prioritizing it above my other emails that I have received. So this is a great way to ensure that you're keeping those important emails at the top of mind and they're not getting buried in the rest of your inbox. Next, we have a bonus tip, which is this stop processing more rules. And this is helpful when you receive an email that meets the conditions of multiple rules. So for example, if we received an email that said Q4 project and I was on the CC line, then what is going to happen? So if we go back to all of our rules, then how these rules work is they go from top to bottom. And if you have that stop processing more rules, then it is going to process this rule and then it's not going to continue to move down the list and process other rules. But if we untick the stop processing for more rules, then say we receive that email with the Q4 project, it is going to pin that email and then it is going to move to this next rule, which is the CCBCC. And it is going to move that email to that folder that we defined but it will pin that email to the top of that folder. And if you want to reorder any of your rules, then you can simply use the arrows to reorder them and then just use that stop processing button to fine tune your rules exactly how you see fit. Number three is how we can mark emails from specific people as important. 
So we will call this rule high. And then under condition, we are going to go when the recipient address includes. And then here we can enter all or part of an email address. So if you have a client, then you can enter their at and then whatever their domain is, that's part of their email address. So this way, anybody from that organization that emails you will meet this condition. And then under add an action, we are going to go with mark with importance. And then you can do high, normal, or low. I'm going to make this high because office skills with Amy clients are a high priority. We're going to run the rule now and save. Back in my inbox, we are going to see that that email from Mike has been marked with a high importance. So you can visually see which emails are important. Tip number four is how we can categorize our emails to make them stand out. So I've already given this one a name and then under condition, we could use the same condition that we used in the previous tip, which would be adding that specific domain for certain clients. But in this case, I wanna go when the subject includes and then we will do document signed. So any email that says documents signed in the subject line is going to be triggered. And the action is going to be categorize. So here from the category dropdown, you could create a new category, or if you've already got a category created, then you can define it here. And if you are enjoying this video, then please give it a thumbs up. It lets me know that you like it and helps me create better content for you. So we are going to once again run this rule now and then save. Back in the inbox, we have this email here from Mike that says document signed by Mike and we see that thumbs up category has already been applied. So this I'm envisioning is helpful if you have a sales pipeline, for example, you've just received a notification that the documents have been signed by that client that you really wanted. And now seeing that category is going to prompt you to take additional steps throughout the sales process. And as a little tip with these categories, you can select the thumbs up category and then it is going to search all of your emails that have that category. Alternatively, you can use the search bar to search for your categories. So there is that thumbs up category and that is now going to search for all of those emails with that category applied. Tip number five is how we can move emails that contain unsubscribe in the body to a newsletter folder. We all have so many newsletters that we want to receive, but they can definitely clutter the inbox. So here the condition is going to be when the message body includes and the words will be unsubscribe and then add an action is going to be moved to. And then here we will define that folder. So you can once again, create a new folder. I already have a folder called newsletters. It's not in this list though. So I will go move to a different folder and then locate it that way. We will run the rule now and save. So now when I close out of here, I did have an email from Mike that said unsubscribe, but it is now being moved to this newsletter folder and we will see that weekly newsletter containing unsubscribed that has automatically been removed, which is a great way to clear out the clutter in your inbox. Number six is how we can create quick steps to automatically forward an email to a specific person. This is helpful if you want to forward an email to your boss, your assistant, or even a department to streamline the process. So here I have an invoice that I have reviewed and I need to forward it to accounting. So I could just simply forward this email, enter in the email address and then send it that way. Or we can do this with a quick step. So from the quick steps drop down, we will go manage quick steps and then add quick step. We'll call this one finance and then the action. This is going to look similar to the rules. So we are going to select forward to. And then here we will define the person or department that we want to forward this email to. You can add an optional description and then select your shortcut keys. So we'll just go with control shift five. Then we can save our quick step. And now back in my email, I can simply go control shift five 
And that email is going to be quickly forwarded with that pre-populated person or department to streamline this process. Tip number seven is how we can quickly create a task or an event. So if I want to create a task or event from this email for the document signed, then we can head up to my day and then simply select the email and drag it over to add as a task or add as an event. This isn't technically a rule, but it is such a quick tip and saves so much time that I did just want to quickly highlight it here. Number seven is how we can use automatic replies. So in this case, we will go up to the gear icon on the top right. And then from this handy dandy search bar, we will just search for reply and then we will see automatic replies. Now this is typically used when people go on holiday, but it is also so helpful if you are going to be away or in a meeting or a corporate event that is going to take you away from managing your emails as quickly as you normally would. So you can turn this on and then you can define the time frame that you want this email to go out. Down here we have two different compose areas where you can define an automatic reply for people inside your organization. And down below we have the send replies for people outside of your organization. And if you are enjoying this video, then please comment below your favorite feature that I have highlighted today these rules create the automation portion of my four strategies for managing your inbox, which is another video that I've done. And now I want to take a quick look at some tips for managing Outlook rules, and then we will dive into some limitations, which are quite important and a good thing to keep in mind. So there are three main tips that you need to consider when you are creating your Outlook rules. Number one is to keep it simple. Less is definitely more because it's going to be easier for you to manage. Number two is to take the ideas that I have given you today and then mix them and match them to suit your needs. And tip number three is your mobile device. I have noticed that all of the rules that I've created today don't sync perfectly to your mobile device. So keep that in mind when you are using your phone, when you have these rules set up. Number 10 is Outlook rule error and limits. So when we create these rules, there are limitations for size. It's not based on a specific number of rules, but based on the capacity of storage that your rules are taking up. And for most Outlook users, we can have 256 kilobytes of storage specifically designated to our rules. And some factors that contribute to the storage are the names of your rules, which is why I said that we should keep these as short as possible when you are creating your rules, but then also the number of conditions. So if you have a rule with a lot of conditions and a lot of actions or exceptions, then those are going to take up more storage space as well, which is why for this newsletter one, we are just using the word unsubscribe, which will try and capture all of the newsletters rather than creating a rule for each specific newsletter that you have, because that's going to take up a lot of storage. And then if you have any errors saying that you have reached your storage, then what you can do is temporarily disable a rule as these only take up storage if they are active, or you can even go ahead and delete a rule and then that will free up some space as well. And if your rules are not working the way that you should, then there is also this report that you can generate and then it will be emailed to your inbox so that you can analyze and try and pinpoint what has gone wrong. And to check out those four stages for managing your inbox, you can check out my other video linked here.